On a hot summer night in Oslo, Norway, the dead rise from their graves. Three families are dealing with grief and they don't know how to handle this because they have some undead loves and what do we do with this and how can we handle our loved ones coming back it's handling the undead which is a neon studios offering from norway it was written and directed by thea Vestadal and based on all by john ajvid lindquist check out the respective imdb pages for the full listen to their work and this centers around three families as i said in that horrible horrible musical intro i do apologize but i had to have a little bit of humor because this is not a happy movie Movie. So you have Anna, played by Rene uh, Reinsviz. I really do apologize if I totally butchered any of these Norwegian names. She was in The Worst Person in the World. Not only was she great in that, I need to check out more of her stuff. She's also a fucking knockout. She's a great actress, but she is a goddamn knockout. Anyway, you do have the character of David. Anders Danielson lie. It didn't lie. And Eva of Vitor Zane, uh, Bahar Pars, <coughs> and a bunch of other names that... I wrote down and I would just totally butcher and I'm pretty certain I got that wrong. So yes, during a hot summer night in Oslo, Norway, the dead start coming back to life. Why? Because of some weird event that, you know, has a piercing sound <clears throat> and just is causing a whole bunch of issues, power outages and whatever. We have no other explanation other than that. We get little tidbits that the government is investigating, but they have no explanation. And from there, three particular families had their lives uprooted. And I say three for particular families, it's actually really just two families and one individual that lost somebody close to them. And they come back during various stages of decomposition. One in particular is a lot worse. And from there, we have a slow meditative drama with some horror suspense elements about how would you handle if you lost somebody, you're grieving, and suddenly, shit, they're back to life. And what the hell is going on here? Did, did I just dream, you know? That, did I dream within a dream that they were suddenly dead? Oh no, they're back to life and you would want them to be like normal, but they're the undead. So handling the undead is a little bit difficult to do because they're the undead. They no longer have souls. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of something of them in there, but they are just totally gone. And from there, yeah, these three families must solve this mystery before they end up being zombie history. Handling the undead tales, woohoo. So I was excited to see this from when I saw the trailer. And to be perfectly honest, I would have seen this in theaters a couple months ago. But it was only playing at some small theaters in Seattle, and I just want to say, fuck Seattle, I'm not going to go that far. So I ran it on Amazon for just under eight bucks after tax and decided to give it a shot. And you know what? While Neon Studios has <coughs> produced a few films that I haven't liked, more often than not, I think their stuff's good to great. Is this in the upper echelon of Neon Studio movies? No. But is it pretty good? Yes, and I will explain why. Great cinematography, a lot of interpretive um, story elements through reactions and emotions, and the lead actress playing Anna. I mean, again, I'm not going to butcher her name, but she is great in this. <clears throat> and there's other good stuff as well. There's, you know, one between a mother and a daughter. There's a family that, you know, is struggling once one of the parents goes down. There's a lot of really good stuff. There's one particular scene I will talk about, the spoilers I could have done without, but it was in the trailer. So I'm like, oh, God, no, please, I don't think I did. Oh, they didn't. If you've seen the trailer, you know what I'm talking about. But we do get a little bit of setup. We find out why these characters maybe have a, a fractured relationship with the family members of, you know, the family members that are still alive because they're dealing with this respective grief. We find out why and how people... We, we don't necessarily find out how people died. We just find out that they're dead and that they start coming back to life. But it's... I did like the 70s style opening uh, or 70s style title screen. That was kind of nice. Uh, break out the subtitles unless you understand Norwegian. I don't, so I had to bust out the subtitles. Um, there was a uh, haunting choir music, uh, and you didn't even really get to see anything for a bit. And there were lots of pans over in hallways overhead, <clears throat> stuff like that. And from there, we have a movie that's actually pretty good overall. This is a movie I could definitely see people either stopping or walking out of if it's in a theater near you. If you decide to stop this and not finish it, I will totally understand. If you liked this movie even more than I did, please let me know what you really liked about it in the comments. Losing somebody would be very, very tough, and this movie tackles that well 
but it is very much a slow burn and takes a bit to get going. So I am going to get into spoilers in just a second, but good performances, some good stuff once it gets going. The thing is, this is almost more of like a short story stretched out into a full-length feature. That being said, there are good elements, some good makeup effects, some subtlety, some good reactions, and it's just some good stuff overall. Just stands one scene that they could have done without, even though it did play into the fact that that person is no longer who they thought they were, and we let him off the hook. Rest in peace, Dennis Green, assuming he's dead. Anyway, three, two, one, and spoilers. So, yeah, people start coming back to life, and it just gets really, really weird. The first line of dialogue is like eight minutes in. This movie's 97 minutes long. Um, losing your loved one would be tough. There is a mother that, um, I, it's either a mother that puts her daughter to rest or a daughter that puts her mother to rest. I mean, honestly, they both look pretty goddamn old. So nevertheless, you lose somebody close to you. And then, you know, there's, uh, there's Anna's dad. He, uh, he's handled, he's not handling the fact that his grandson's dead. He's laying on the grave, and then here's this, uh, you know, here's knocking or whatever. Basically, somebody buried. It's the grandson. So he decides to go back, dig up the grandson, and everything. And that's just perfectly normal. Perfectly goddamn normal to do. Maybe not, hmm, I probably have had too much to drink or I've been up too long. Probably shouldn't do this. But yeah, after the piercing sounds and all this crazy stuff that goes on, and actually that was nice and uh, subtle storytelling. Could have done without the piercing sound because, ooh, that really, really hurt me. We see the people come back to life, and it just focuses on these three families. I mean, there's a little bit of stuff later where more of the dead are coming back to life, but we just zero in on these three families. Anna, her dad, and her son Elias in particular. Ava, who's about to go to work, says, you know, in, uh, via you know text to her son, it's about to be his birthday, I love you whether you like it or not. And that was a line that was through the trailers. And... Then from there, we just basically get the characters handling their respective undead loved ones coming back. Um, there's a point where, you know, the old ladies clean up the other old lady. Again, I cannot, I, I, I assume mother clean up daughter, I don't know, daughter clean up mother. It was hard to tell. <clears throat> but she cleans her up, she tries to feed her, and then the snapping, because, you know, zombies, they like to eat. People, specifically. <laughs> This is what it sounds like and looks like when zombies cry. Do, 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 do. Um, <clears throat> basically, um, Ava ends up waking up, gets scanned, and then we hear on, ra on the radio, government officials are figuring out all this stuff and what's actually going on. Um, <clears throat> but they have no explanation for this phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Um, <clears throat> Could have done without the uh, Norwegian, uh, the old Norwegian nudity, but whatever. It's not for me necessarily. If you get down like that, please, please do not share that on the channel. <laughs> but uh, Anna and her dad basically went to their vacation home to hide the fact that Elias is still there. And we focus on them. Then we go back to David and, his, and the couple kids <clears throat> and his, um, and the fact that he's trying to you know, help stuff with one of his kids' birthday. Birthdays, he hands him a bunny. And I love bunnies. I've had I've had three bunnies in my life. I can't anymore because uh, I, I have the producer and he would he would kill it. Because he's a hunter. <clears throat> they take the rabbit to the hospital and Ava, because she's a zombie, ends up squeezing it and killing it. And that's the scene I could have done without. God damn it. I hate, I hate animal violence. I'm not knocking the director or writer. <clears throat> I get why they did it. It's a show... Oh, this loving person is no longer here. They're gone. Um, and then the dad goes out to get some more water because they had to rowboat to the vacation home. And then Anna happens to, you know, she's seen her son. Her son's the most decomposed. But she sees this other zombie show up. How it got there, I don't know, by the way. Um... And I don't know if it's on an island or whatever, or if this <laughs> zombie just woke up from like a grave somewhere. There was a point where the government was digging up all these other graves. So great, you just unearthed a goddamn army of unholy stumbling Norwegian zombies. But uh, the dad ends up trying to attack the zombie that invades their property. But he gets eaten. Good job there, you dumbass. And Anna sees this. 
Dave is trying to, you know, basically with his kids, like, you know, we probably can't bring mom home. The, you know, the old lady eats the other old lady. So the zombies are doing what zombies do. And Anna loves her son, but says, I'll see you later. And, <clears throat> you know, I love you. I'll see you soon. Dumps him in the goddamn lake. And also, um, the, the son plays on his trumpet for his fallen rabbit that he had for all of, like, a few days. Yeah, it's not a happy movie. It's not a happy movie at all. It gets a B plus for the visuals and the emotions and that kind of stuff. It's really, really good as far as that. Is it enough of a slow burn that it could turn some people off? Yes. Is it one of my favorite films of the year? No. I'm a little bit disappointed by some of the pacing issues. I feel that there's, you know, they could have added a little bit more stuff to it. But nevertheless, good experimentation stuff. Well done by the writer director. And again, the actress playing Anna. God, magnifique. God, she's great and she's beautiful. Anyway. So yeah, B+. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.